Hello, so a bit of a different video for me. I've wanted to do videos like this for a while. I always come up with the idea, overthink it, and then never end up doing it. And I felt compelled to do this one, so I'm just gonna get it done while the idea is fresh in my head. So basically, I wanted to talk about competitions and being judged for our artwork especially when you're the kind of person like me who has an anxious mind, who overthinks things and just end up being a bit of a stress head over it all. So my specific experience you probably know is with face and body painting uh, but I'm sure it kind of can relate to other industries as well. So art and creativity is really subjective, we all like different things and also when we create a piece of art, we're putting so much heart and soul into it, we're wearing our hearts on our sleeves with it and especially in regards to like body painting, so much for some people weeks and months of planning, planning your design, looking for inspiration, um, spending money on materials, making props, making headpieces, some people go really to town and it's not just uh, painting a pretty picture on the day, people put so much effort into these things. Whether you have an anxious mind or not, when you put so much effort into something it can be really hard to be judged on it. So why do we do it? Why do we put ourselves through it? I know for me personally with body painting, it takes six hours or so to do a body paint. I feel like it's such a shame when you do a body paint and you take a few photos and then it just gets washed off. That's why I always prefer painting at events or competitions. You get to share your art with so many other people. The model gets the chance to perform the piece on the catwalk. There's such a camaraderie amongst all artists and models at these things. If you ever go, it's amazing. Like literally, the atmosphere in the room's electric and we all support each other so much. So it's just amazing to be able to share your work in that kind of environment and to show people out there in the real world and not just through a computer screen. However, if you don't approach these kind of things like competitions with the right mindset, being judged on your work can really take its toll. I've recently come back from an awesome body painting festival. It was the first body craft up in Cleethorpes and I feel absolutely awesome but I've never usually feel like that after these things so I felt compelled to kind of make this video to kind of go through what I've been through, the emotions in my head and where I've been at and just thought I hope that it can help some other people that may be either going through it or that might go through it in the future. So basically for anyone who doesn't know me personally let me tell you a little bit about my story. I um, started face and body painting a few years ago. started entering a few little competitions and got some kind of early successes and it just felt really great. I've always throughout my life felt like a bit of a nobody which I think stems from those kind of past traumas of school bullies etc and different things like that. When I discovered face and body painting and also started getting a bit of recognition for it almost I felt like a somebody or I felt like this was my journey, this was my path and it really kind of made me feel like I'd found my place. So then I just kind of started on an internal mission within myself just to improve and to achieve more. So in 2015 I placed third in the UK's biggest body painting festival. It felt absolutely amazing. I also entered another competition later that year and won and I felt on top of the world. And I just almost kind of felt like I'm on a roll here. I need to keep rolling with this. I need to aim big. I need to get achieve this by next year. I need to do this. Let's keep going with this role and see where it leads. Now I'm a big believer in the law of attraction and if you can dream it, you can do it. So by no means am I saying that I was wrong to have those dreams and those big massive goals. And I do still have those dreams but I almost become obsessed with the fact of needing to achieve them almost to justify my self-worth. Now don't get me wrong I'm not a competitive person. I don't want to beat everyone just to be the best and it might sound completely contradictory to what I'm talking about but it's true I'm not a sore loser and I feel so happy for all of those that do place. However my battle it wasn't with everyone else around me it was internally within myself and just that little voice in my head that was telling me you need to be a somebody and this is going to prove it and this is going to do it for you. So it might sound confusing if you've kind of never experienced that kind of feeling going on but if you have you know exactly what I'm on about. So like I said I almost became obsessed 
obsessed with the fact that I needed to do better and improve and that I'd return next year and I'd beat my personal goals and all of a sudden that would just fix everything and make me so happy and feel wonderful. I spent ages studying winning designs and what made them work and how I could apply that to my style. I just really over analysed everything and like I said became obsessed with that level of improvement within myself and wanting to achieve it in such a super quick time as well. So the next festival came, I painted my heart out, I put my everything into it, I incorporated everything I'd learned and studied. I was a little bit stressed in the day during the paint because I was a lot slower than I wanted to be on a few parts and my design had to change from my original plan in a few areas. I think it worked out for the best because there was a lot of detail in it anyway, it didn't need even more detail. But overall at the time, despite kind of how stressed I felt during the paint, at the end of it I was quite happy. I was quite happy with how I'd done. I felt like I couldn't have done much better. I'm not one to kind of spend ages and ages on props and stuff, but for this paint I had done. I'd made a headdress, I'd made a mask, I'd made shoes. So I put a lot more effort in than I usually do with paint. And overall, when it came together as a piece, the second I put down my paintbrush, I was happy. I was happy with how it looked. The overall effect, it was ex kind of exactly what I was striving for. And yet, yeah, it didn't place. So despite all my effort put into trying to improve, working so hard on trying to create a winning formula, spending longer than I usually would on props and such. Now I don't want to sound like I'm big headed or judgmental or anything like that, but anyone who has anxiety and is creative will probably admit that they do the same. So when the catwalk was on, I was analysing my piece against everyone else's pieces, not in the sense of, oh, I'm better than them or anything like that, just more in the sense of, does my work stand out enough? Could it deserve recognition? And so the catwalk was on, everyone's pieces were wonderful, the standard was so high, but I actually honestly did have that feeling inside of, yeah, I think I, think I could do it, I think my piece does stand out, I think I've done okay. And for me, that's a big thing alone. That is a big thing to feel like that. And yet, my name didn't get called out. So the winning designs are all fantastic and I don't want to take anything away from the winners. They're all wonderful people. They created beautiful artwork. But I just, I had this confident and gut feeling that I'd done enough work, like not just on the day, but the kind of background work that I'd put in in the whole previous year to try and get better and achieve those big massive goals I got, I really thought, I had done enough and then all of a sudden it's like being told no you haven't and like I said I believe in the law of attraction and I'd really been putting effort into that as well and visualizing the win and everything and I think it's just because I placed third the year before I put so much pressure on myself to get better than that like I said not to beat others but to beat my own kind of goals and my piece was actually so much better than the piece that I placed with but because it was all so overwhelming in my head, I went back to my hotel room that night and I was a wreck. I was just completely overcome with a surge of emotions about it all. I had such intense feelings of not feeling good enough, hating my paint, thinking I was terrible, feeling useless and worthless, and that I'd wasted all that time trying to improve because I must not have improved, and I must have took steps backwards, and that it was all just a waste of time and effort. I was so hard on myself because of that extreme pressure that no one else put on me, I put it on myself. And in the end, I just really ended up not enjoying that weekend. And this weekend that I spent so much money on to go and do because I wanted a nice painty weekend that I would enjoy and I didn't enjoy it because I put this pressure on myself and I was just so stressed out and I actually come home and really seriously considered giving up body painting. I'd previously had all these wild dreams of coming back, beating my previous goals and gradually improving until, I don't know, one day I could go to the world championships and place in the world championships and if I worked hard enough it was going to be doable and I could do it and that night I just felt back at square one. I just really wondered, do I have the energy to try and improve some more? I'd put so much effort and energy into improving and I just thought, I haven't got any more energy. I haven't got any more energy to give to try and improve, to try and 
better myself with it. I've put so much effort and energy into this. I have nothing left to give. I'm just not good enough and I never will be. And this feeling, it stayed with me for months. It really affected my whole year. I carried on face painting as a business and had my most successful year face painting as a business and being self-employed. But I hardly did or posted out any other work just because of that serious feeling of wanting to give up and just feeling, is it all worth it? So over the rest of the year, I had a few other body paints that I'd already got kind of scheduled in, that were demos and things like that. And because of how I'd felt, I felt so anxious and nervous about doing them, but I couldn't let them down. And I'm glad I didn't because working with some really encouraging models, the kind and motivational words of other painters that were coming over to me and telling me that they liked my work and what I was doing, and just none of that pressure of being judged for my work. It just made me really realise why I painted in the first place because I enjoyed it and when I finally started being and feeling positive about my work again I looked back at that paint that I'd done that I'd hated that had ruined my whole year and made me feel like giving up and it was the best piece I'd ever created yet it put me through all of this self-doubt. So during my times of kind of feeling a bit rubbish about it all, wanting to give up, I spoke to quite a few different people who gave me different words of advice and different things like that, shared their experiences with me because believe it or not, all of us artists go through the same things, most of us anyway, we go through the same anxieties, same feelings of self-doubt. And yeah, I just kind of picked up a few different tips and tricks on how to change your mindset and how important your mindset is if you're going to put yourself out there to be judged. So like I said at the start of the video, I've just come back from an awesome weekend at Bodycraft Festival in Cleethorpes. It was awesome, such a, it was like a painty holiday. We all just were a bit carefree, we all had fun. It was such a good atmosphere. I feel so positive about rough painting that I just felt like I wanted to share how my mindset has changed so that other people can go and go into these competitions and come back feeling the way that I do now and not the way that I did last year. So the biggest point that I want to make I guess is that art is so subjective. We all have different tastes, we all like different things. What I love you might not like and vice versa. And what you need to remember is the judges are only human. They are exactly the same as you and I, as in that they have their own personal tastes too. And it's a hard task judging all those different pieces of artwork on something that's, like I said, so subjective. We all look at things in such a different way. If you look at a competition, for example, for body painting, you're given one theme, the amount of different interpretations of it like, it's amazing, everyone deserves a prize really for how different we all think about it. It's a hard task for a judge anyway, but like I said, they have their own personal tastes. They have the things that they like and the things that they are looking for and different judges are looking for different things. So you need to remember it's not personal or detrimental to you or your work. It's just something that sticks out to them and their interests. And like I said, it's different for different judges. So my piece at the weekend, um, you've probably seen me plaster it about on social media. I've even done a video on it that is probably the video right before this video. So the theme was beside the seaside. I, of course, did not think sand and sea. I thought ghost train because that's me. And as you can probably tell by how much I've shared it around, I am so proud of that paint. I was really excited to create it because it's just so me. I was really proud of the concept, the composition, the execution, the overall look. And technically, I think it's probably up there with one of my personal best paints. But did it place? No. And you know what? I surprised myself after how I was last year with how completely cool with that I was. Which I think is probably the reason why I felt compelled to make this video because just that realisation and of how it didn't bother me was so overwhelming to me and in a good positive way of how far I've come in a short space of time and I almost felt like I needed that negative experience from last year in order to get to this part of my journey because if I hadn't gone through that I might not feel this positive about it. But yeah, as I say, I'm so proud of that paint and it didn't place because the judges probably thought it was a bit dark for their taste. 
especially with the theme right beside the seaside, there's so much colour. But to me, my design is completely up my street. But yeah, it's all completely subjective and down to the individual. Probably not everyone there liked it, but I loved it. I was so proud of it. And what you really just need to basically focus on is your own little bubble and looking at your piece and what you have achieved that you've surprised yourself with, what you've done well, what you've created in this piece that you haven't done in a piece before and you're so proud of that. Really looking at it with a positive mind on, with the negative mind out the way and just looking at it for the positives and to see how far you've come because with every paint you do, you will improve on something. So another little tip that I personally find helps me enjoy my paints more is that I don't meticulously plan them, especially in regards to body painting. So much on the day can affect your time scale. You have a limited time of six hours, sometimes five, and so much can affect that no matter how much you plan your time. So people seem to think that six hours is a long time, but believe me, it is not. And you could very easily become engrossed in a certain section and spend ages on it, and before you realise, you've completely spent too much time on it and you're gonna run out of time and you need to do something and therefore you have to change your design. Your model might need to take more breaks than planned. Your airbrush might clog up and you need to spend time cleaning it. So for me personally, to avoid any of those stresses, it really helps me to keep my planning really simple. I get a rough idea of the colours and the colour scheme in my head. I do a quick biro sketch if that of a composition I have in mind. I save a few inspiration and reference pictures onto my iPad for me to look at. My work's quite illustrative, so if I'm doing something in the piece that I've not done before, like I don't often draw kids screaming, for example, like on my ghost train, so I practiced just in my sketchbook a few different faces of kids screaming, just rough sketches, just to make sure I could get the proportions but basically I just like to see how it goes on the day there's so much that inspires you in the moment when you're painting and I add a lot of the little details and touches just literally as a spur of the moment thing and I find if I plan too meticulously my piece is far too regimented I don't really enjoy it because I haven't left room for the creative flow and yeah it just it's so much more enjoyable so also, when I did design things so meticulously, I would be so hard on myself with the bits that I didn't do. And so often at these events, I speak to artists about their work and how their day's gone and how they feel. And they're stressing out because their design hasn't gone to plan. There's bits that they missed out that should be there and then not. But the one thing that you need to remember is no one knows what it was supposed to look like other than you. For me, only roughly planning out kind of combats that battle going on in my head because I only really plan the main focal points which I always get done first, so they're always done. Another quote that I have heard many people say is that it's only paint. Like, last year I let my anxiety over just a bit of paint make me nearly give up something that I love doing but it literally it's only a bit of paint and more so with face and body painting it just gets washed off that evening and then you can start over fresh and try something completely different and finally just something that you need to remember whether it's a competition or whether you're just comparing yourself to others around you we are all on different parts of our journey it doesn't mean that we're worse than someone else or not as good. And these people that you look up to, they probably feel exactly the same as you when they are looking at people further along the road than them. We all have to take the time to develop our skills. It doesn't always come overnight. And even those who have a natural artistic flair have to work hard to refine it. So whether you're further along your journey or whether you're right at the beginning, you need to remember exactly that it's a journey. It's not about being that ultimate goal right here, right now. It's just being the best you can be at this particular moment in time. It's really about taking note of all those little things you accomplish each time you paint right here in the here and now because if you don't you will never get further along that road or you'll become overwhelmed with negativity and you'll just want to give up just notice all of those little things that you're really happy with and proud of only if you're in that positive bubble will you find the fight to improve and achieve your goals and 
still dream big, still dream big, but just don't obsess over it. Like, if it's meant to be, it will happen. You just need to focus on what you can do in the here and now to keep yourself happy and therefore improving, because if you're not happy, you won't improve. You will get frustrated and you will see nothing but the bear. If it gets recognised in a competition, then that's amazing. But if it's not, it's not the end of the world. And if you can walk away feeling happy with what you created and that you've just improved since your last paint, then that is the biggest win you can get, really. So I hope that I haven't waffled on too much. I hope my points have been clear and have not been all over the shop. But basically, you just need to remember why you paint in the first place. And it's because you enjoy it. And if you happen to get lucky and your work is to the judge's taste on that day, fantastic. And if not, there will be another judge. If you're happy with your work at the end of the day, you can't ask for more.